<laughs> I uh, once again welcome. Uh, the tra this is the traveling roadshow edition. As I do this on my lunch from work, I uh, I don't have anything to read from tonight. So I guess I want to go with the old Northern Runes radio, um, whatever the hell, fireside chat thing, I think I called it from years ago. Where I just start talking and something will come out. Invariably throughout a week, I'll, I'll come across events and more often than not, it seems like they have a common theme to them. And I've talked with several people this week and I was one of them. In the last month I had an emergency root canal and went to work, I tore my pec and I, went to work with my arm in a sling. I just, I just never stopped. But it seemed like every step of the way, fucking something's hitting me in the head. And then I turn around, I see a buddy, he lost a finger. Saw another friend, she got cut. And then I saw another friend, she went in for, for a couple hours and she stood up and she's like, fuck this. And so, I'm, I'm watching all of this happen with my associates, all of these people dealing with these struggles. You know, and I know what Justin says, and I love him to death because he's, he's right on the money. He never deviates from what he says. He's, he's consistent as the day is long. And that's, that's such an awesome thing to have in, a, in an acquaintance or a friend, if you will. That pain is growth. Struggle, struggle means growth. Sometimes I look at this and I and I see people. I see people doing this stuff hey, and. You got something you might want. Oh really? Sounds interesting. <laughs> anyway, I see I see all these people coming up against this roadblock, and you have to ask yourself: um, Am I on the right path? Am I beating my head against a damn wall because everything is as tough as it is? Am I, re am I really going the route I'm supposed to be going? Am I supposed to keep a stiff upper lip, keep one foot in front of the other and deal with it, drive on with the hard on and keep making it happen? One foot in front of the other to get where you're going, no matter the consequences, no matter the odds, no matter the pain, keep growing, keep moving. Because that's the way I was learned. That's what I was taught. And I see a lot of unhappy people doing just that. Some folks would scoff at the idea of happiness. What is happiness? What's that matter? Yeah, but you know what? I was listening to Alan Watts in his book, Out of Your Mind. And Valerie, me and her, her and I were talking about this. At a certain age, the elders of the community, they realize their best years are behind them or whatever. And, and they, uh, they sign their stuff over the kids and they give their kids the opportunity to become what they're supposed to become, to grow into something, to, they hand them over their success and they kind of give it all up and they become what they call forest dwellers. Now, I'm really oversimplifying that. So if you get the chance, I highly encourage you to read a little bit more into that. But those folks, they go out in the woods. This is where the shaman come from. This is where the people that understand the flows of energy of life across this world originate. So I'm just wondering, is there a call for us in, to return to this wilderness? How often do you see somebody talking about the grandeur of the woods or reading John Muir and the fascination that painted such a, a vivid illustration upon the canvas of his imagination? The wilderness of the Sierra Nevadas and California and the Grand West, the painting of those artists of the Hudson School, <coughs> Bierstadt paintings that just larger than life and yet they call to our hearts they they speak to us in volumes of something that this is not what we're supposed to be doing we're on this is not the path we're supposed to be on and then along comes this faith of this spirituality this also true that 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 reminds us that there that there is something more we don't need to wait on somebody to give us permission to be great we don't need to wait on somebody to give us permission to be okay with ourselves we got to do a little work. We got to get up off our dead asses and make some things happen. We can't just sit there and realize, hey, I'm great. I ain't going to do shit. That's not how it works. <laughs> I see all that happening. And I wonder there's got to be some correlation for this grand new horizon of our spirituality, this new wilderness to roam, to brave for our, for our spirits to that calls to our hearts and yet we got to survive 
There's so many of us today that are walking with one foot in one world and one foot in another world. That kind of chaos makes people mad. That kind of chaos stymies emotional development and spiritual growth. When you have that kind of confusion running in your mind, how do you cultivate the best parts of yourself? Because we can't figure out which part we're supposed to go with. You know, I guess in the, in the end, you have to make some kind of commitment. You have to either realize, I'm either going to go in and make myself a hat full of money, or I'm going to go in and be okay just being, just getting by, and become what I'm supposed to become spiritually, and help those closest to me escort them towards that final doorway, that, that final door where we all pass through as we meet the sun-facing goddess. <clears throat> I don't think until we come across those kind of individuals can we make the right decisions. I don't think there's anyone out there right now in this spirituality of Ossetru offering people a legitimate recourse of what it might look like to go ahead and commit to developing yourself spiritually, to handling that emotional baggage. It's odd that the warriors among us seem to have the best grip on it. Those who fight, those who take control of their bodies and develop it to physical perfection. I don't think that's accident either. Somewhere in between all of that and walking around and braving the wilderness of our own minds and in truth, what could be wilder than the wilderness of our own minds? The thoughts we were taught, the thoughts we're learning, the thoughts we're unlearning and learning new things. What could be more confusing than that thought? How do we shoot through that chaos? How do we become something more? Is it worth it? What's it look like? Has anyone demonstrated what that, what that might be? Lots of people have demonstrated what it means to be rich. Hell, look at Israel. There's a tribe of people that figured out how to, they said, this is ours and we're taking it. Ain't nobody can do anything about it and nobody can. Hey, we're going to make some money too. <laughs> they went and made some money. They did everything that some of us would give our left nut to see happen for us. And yet, for some reason, they continue to be a distraction. We get distracted by it. Because we don't have an image of what it looks like if we might do that. What would that look like? The majority of the world we live in today is pretty much a result of what that looks like for somebody that commits to the mythology of the Industrial Revolution. And the purpose of their life is to make as much money as they can. <laughs> It's interesting that all these thoughts come up. You know, I mean, that's just, that's just how we think. That's how we grow. Because at some point, when we're walking around in that wilderness, like Odin did when he walks through the wilderness, we got to hang ourselves on that tree. We got to figure out what part we're going to sacrifice to hear the songs of our ancestors, to fall shrieking and find the runes, the keys to the universe. To fall shrieking. He didn't stroll over and pick a basket full of daisies and come up with some runes. That motherfucker suffered. He fell from that tree shrieking, or he was cut down from that tree shrieking in pain and agony. Perhaps that's what it takes for all of us to figure out which path we want to take. It brings me right back to what Jim says, I guess. All pain is growth. See, we're going to figure it out one way or another. And more often than not, it's going to involve a great deal of pain. Yeah, have you cultivated what it takes to handle that kind of pain? Have you cultivated within yourself the tolerance to deal with that kind of pain and keep moving forward? The only place I learned it was in the infantry. Tear a pet, go to work. Get a root canal, go to work. Break a leg, go to work. Somewhere in all of that, somewhere in all of that, there is a path for us to follow. And I'm really convinced we got to figure out what that image looks like if we follow it. 
we got to figure out what we're going to look like when we decide to go whole hog in this fashion or that fashion. See, because a common man used to be able to build himself a kingdom of his own hand. <laughs> That's the romance of the entire series of Conan books. Come from the bottom, built himself up, built himself his own kingdom. <laughs> used to be a time we could do that. In truth, today's world, we can still do that. But I don't think the people that most of us are willing to sacrifice. I know for myself, I am not willing to sacrifice my daughter's happiness for that. Couldn't mean less to me when compared to her happiness. Some people scoff at that, but hey, I brought her into this world. Some days you got to realize I'm all she's got. As parents, we got to remember when we bring these children in the world, we're all they got. Now it's not just us building a kingdom. Now we got other things to consider. <laughs> See, just that is a huge amount of information to try to filter through. Without a fucking instruction manual, mind you. <laughs> Here you go. Check this out. It's a new world. We're going to rip you out, screaming and crying, kick you in the ass, and give you hell. Okay, now what? <laughs> well, here we are um, with no instruction manual. And yet, I think if we listen to our hearts, I think if we apply ourselves to understand that the best thinking I could come up with put me in this room this evening working to do almost the impossible and do the best I can at it, I think that's what creates the way for my heart to express itself. Some of the greatest ideas have come from men and women who are toiling away at what's in front of them. The thing that they're best thinking they could come up with, put right in front of them. They're doing their level best and somewhere along the way they receive that stroke of inspiration or influence or illumination or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and they go on to find that happy, healthy medium. Yeah, somewhere in all that is where we got to go. <laughs> I don't think that any one of us right now has what it takes to tell everyone, hey, if you do this, if you go this route, if you listen to what I say, if you pay attention, you're going to look like this. And this is what you want to look like. That's very much each and every one of us our own choice. But there's so many people in Osetru who want to be wolves, but in reality, that's what they need. That's what they want. They're sheep. They need to be told what to do. The best thing we can ever do for anyone is to be an example of what it means to live these nine noble virtues. Who knows what that might look like in your life? For my friend Robbie, it's, it's, a, uh, it's abundance like you can't imagine for his whole family. Not just him, for his whole family. And it's a really, it's, it's something well worth emulating. He made the sacrifices. He did the hard thing. He took the time away. <laughs> and he built something his whole family, his sons and his wife can all follow him in. So we got to look at all of this when we read the lore. We look at our lore and it's what I always try to do. Okay, how does that apply to me today? What's it going to mean if I follow this kind of idea about it well, maybe that's not maybe maybe it has to go with this and see all that come from a lot a lot a lot of self-examination trying to identify just how deeply some of this sickness goes within my thought process that's a real hard thing to realize dude some of the best thinking i could come up with was some of the sickest shit you can imagine <laughs> I mean, you don't spend years and years and years, you know, spinning out of control like I have on occasion throughout my life and then look back on it and think, yeah, it's pretty smart because some of it was dumb. I mean, just dumb, gloriously stupid, funny as hell, but it didn't really move me forward in life. Now we're at that point where we have common sense been restored to us when we realize that that gift was one of the gifts given to us by Odin, Billy, and Ray at the beginning and passed down generation to generation and then reinforced with the visits by Rig. Who knows what blessings Gefion imparted to the bloodline of 
of, of her kingdom. Who knows how many other gods have paid visits, Cavassier's knowledge imparted to the kingdoms of the world. The need of inspiration after that. It's a plethora of gifts. It's like they've just boiled over and said, here you go, man. Here you go, man. We're trying to help. Here you go, man. I'm not going to give you anything, but look at this gift you have. Look at what you've already got within you. Think. Believe. Become something and join us. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could use that frame of thought in everything we do in Austria to really show the world what it means to embrace this kind of ancient spirituality? What if we went through life with that idea firmly ensconced at the forefront of our thought process? Something special is going to happen today because I'm going to give it my best. I think perhaps that's the right mindset in everything that I just said. Something special is going to happen today because I'm going to give it my best. I think I can deal with that. I think I'll try it. Yeah, that's all I got to say. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian. Okay. How about them apples? Anybody got any questions? Because I got some bullshit. Do you want the recording left on or do you want it off? I'll leave it on because there's no telling what I might say. <laughs> I, I was going to talk about left-hand path because I have a real powerful analogy about left-hand path. I think that's horseshit. I think, I mean, I know there's a lot of people talk about how special it is and what the power that it gives you. But look, man, when I tore my peck, I couldn't use my left hand. I realized I could not wipe my own ass with my left hand. These people want to talk about left-hand path. I want to hear it. <laughs> I am not trained with my left hand to even wipe my own ass at 50 fucking years old. This is horseshit. Okay, let's hear about it. <laughs> you know, I don't, you know. <laughs> what can you do with that, man? <laughs> so that I, was the I funniest guess. goddamn story I think I have ever heard. <laughs> I have to tell you. I laughed so hard that night, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad night. I mean, that was a bad day. I mean, you're stuck in a human box of shit and realize you can't wipe your ass with your left hand. You're cramped up. Yeah, it's a bad day. <laughs> then touch your butthole in the middle of all of it? <sighs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> See, everything I just said was sounded cool. Just went to shit. Just like shot out of the sky, B-52. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. That went down to the ground. <laughs> I don't care. That's, that's called real life right there. <laughs> Heck yeah, it is, man. <laughs> Motherfuckers, you stop believing in me, start believing in them damn selves. Woo, come on, now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to do that stand-up routine? No, I have not done that yet. His birthday's next weekend. He wants me to do that. And I'm like, <sighs> okay, here we go. You can do it. I'm just, I'm going to go tell that story. <laughs> That's what I'm say. Yes. I, that one, that one about me, uh, or the one about me at Quick Trip, I don't know which, but that one's pretty good too. <laughs> I, I, you know, if as soon as I do that publicly, Quick Trip's going to release that video of me rolling across the parking lot like a retard. <laughs> <laughs> I know they will. <laughs> oh, well. <sighs> well. If nothing else, then maybe I've maybe I brought a little happiness to the world today. There you go. Well, guys, I, I have to get on this because I'm, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Well, good luck with all that. I might throw a match on it and walk away. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking pissed about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, find a merry tune to whistle while you work because you're still <laughs> going to do it anyway. <laughs> I have screwed around and worked so hard out here. I have a six pack in the morning when I get out of bed. And then, and then when I go in the evening, I still have it. And I'm like, okay, maybe there is a benefit to this. I can see it. <laughs> yeah, I can deal with it. 
All right, guys. I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you all for joining me. It it is just it's probably one of the most wonderful parts of my week to see everybody show up. Thank you so much for supporting all of it and listening and and laughing and just enjoying it and thinking and laughing and just let's just enjoy life. Fuck, man, that's all we can do some days, huh? Definitely. Thank you. You bet, man. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Y'all have a good night. Thanks, Brian. Take care. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Brian. You too. Hey, thanks.